Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Shining Cuckoo, summer migrants to New Zealand that are small with glistening plumage, but with the added aspect of being brood parasites. I hope you enjoy. Shining Cuckoos are the smallest of the two common cuckoos in New Zealand, the other being the long-tailed cuckoo, which is larger and brown in coloration. These birds are an iridescent dark green above and white below, as well as possessing dark green transverse bands, with sexes being alike. They also have a distinct whistling call, which is repeated several times, usually ending with a downwardly slurred whistle, and is generally considered a harbinger of spring. They occur throughout much of New Zealand, and being small and cryptically coloured, is more often heard than seen, with them preferring dense foliage, although they are quite approachable. They are also the smallest cuckoo species, being only 15 to 17 centimetres in length and around 25 grams in weight, about the size of a house sparrow, also being the most southerly ranging breed parasitic bird species in the world, extending to at least 46 degrees south in New Zealand. They predominantly feed on invertebrates, have the ability to eat toxic insects like hairy caterpillars and ladybirds, due to their gizzards being lined with a soft thick lining which catches the spines and absorbs toxins, with said spines and other substances being spat out by the bird. Shining cuckoos are present in New Zealand in spring, summer and autumn, and except for rare records of overwintering birds, they spend the winter in the Bismarck Archipelago around New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, then returning to New Zealand in winter to feed and breed, although other subspecies breed in and around Australia and other Pacific Islands. These annual transoceanic migrations can be thousands of kilometres long, very impressive for birds the size of sparrows, and said journeys were also recognised by Polynesians, who would have observed their annual migrations and assumed in calculators that there must be a substantial amount of land south of the Pacific Islands, perhaps giving them more motivation to journey in their waka and seek out New Zealand. As mentioned, like other cuckoos, they are brood parasites, laying their eggs in the nests of other species, with the foster parents then raising their chicks for them. They target a range of birds, although they chiefly target the nests of grey warblers, with them having a range that largely corresponds with the distribution of the genus. They perch on the rim of their nests, then laying their eggs amongst the grey warbler eggs. Once hatched, the tiny chick then pushes the remaining eggs, or even chicks, out of the nest, allowing for all resources to be allocated to them, with them even being able to mimic their own host calls. Their aggressive shoving and eviction of warbler nestlings has also been found to make them suffer a temporary growth delay as a result of the immense energy required for such a task, although they eventually grow normally after they are being fed constantly by their foster parents. Their eggs are noticeably quite different from the birds they parasitize, though, with them being a dark green colour, and interestingly enough, a study published in 2017 indicated that this dark and cryptic coloration seems to serve to protect cuckoo eggs from being removed by other cuckoos, rather than the warblers, with tests using model eggs of different tones, showing that the host did not reject eggs, but that cuckoos removed eggs of brighter colours. The darker the egg, therefore, the less likely it was detected and removed by a cuckoo. This therefore minimises the risk of ejection by a second female cuckoo visitor to the already parasitised nest, which might overlook the other egg. This suggests therefore that competition amongst cuckoos, rather than rejection by hosts, provides the strongest selection pressure for the evolution of more cryptic eggs among the genus. Despite their apparently lax existence, their numbers appear to be falling because of deforestation on the wintering islands, and even in New Zealand can be preyed upon by cats and are also prone to flying into windows, usually being the most common time people see the birds, when they're either stunned or dead by the house or veranda. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Little Shearwater, the smallest of their group in New Zealand that are also shy, and keep a little further inshore than similar birds. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.